The thing that troubles me just a bit is another set of our values. We've around here valued teaching and research and service for a good long time. People get promoted and tenured and all that, depending how well they do that, and all of that is fine as far as it goes. But we've added, in the last few years, the goal of economic development. Now, I'm not in the least opposed to are doing things which help people get better jobs. I'm not opposed in the least to our improving the economy of the state. I'm not opposed to research which brings in dollars and hires people and does all that. But you know what? I don't think I've spent more than five minutes adding to anyone's economic development. I hope instead I've added to their intellectual development, to their spiritual development, to their moral development, all the rest of it. And that's been for me, an important part of what a great university does. I'm not saying we're against the economy, I'm not saying we shouldn't do that sort of thing, but we're here to help people live in those wider tents. We're here to help people get greater jobs, there's no doubt about that. But what I'm concerned about is what they do when they come home from that work and how they spend the rest of their days. That's what we ought to be worried about as well. There's, not, there's nothing wrong with educating for a job or profession, that's fine, but that's not the whole of the story, and we ought to be able to enlarge those tents and make wide the space of the habitation for those students we know and love so well and who are such a support to all of us and whose, whose love and encouragement I've valued over the years uh, through all this time. Let me just say a couple things about wishes. I do wish that someday we'll have a budget we can really use creatively and positively. I do hope that day occurs. Secondly, I do hope that before too long, Linda and I can go to opening night at a center for the performing arts. And look at Ann back there nodding. And I know that's one of Brady's great goals. All right. Now, at the risk of being shot, I will, I will say this. You know where there is a really great Center for the Performing Arts? KU. KU. It's gorgeous. They have a performing arts series, which should be our envy. I'd like to pick that whole thing up and bring it here. And I know I'm a heretic for saying that, but quality is quality where it is. And we ought to recognize it. And we will do the same thing, and we'll do them one better. So that's what it's all about. I really wish that the cause of teaching gets continued. I really value my colleagues and Mackenzie and Corley and Paul have come down from Iowa State to be part of this for all the good work that's done and I hope that emphasis on teaching both up there at Iowa State and down here continues and Joe and all the folks you know who you are can keep make, making this marvelous group uh, increase and flourish and bang the drum for teaching because it is so supremely, supremely important. I wish somehow that we could continue and let flourish the Honors College with the great leadership that Seward has started and make it go on from there and get even better. <coughs> it's going to be uh, a long hard. We're looking for new people to run it. Seward, of course, is irreplaceable, which reminds me of something I haven't used in a long time. Oh, my goodness. The steward. The story goes that the human cannonball at the circus decided to retire. And he said, you know, it's been 20 years of doing this, five shows a day, seven days a week, I'm tired. And he goes to the circus manager and says, you know, I really want to hang it all up and bring this to all, have my retirement come about. And the circus manager looked him in the eye and said, you know, where in the world are we going to get another man of your caliber? Marky, you can wake up now, don't worry. It'll, it'll, it'll be over soon, I, I assure you. I hope that all those efforts to help our beloved students go, and I want to thank in public all of mine who came here today, and especially those who, who taught Paige, the, uh, the medical ethics final at 6 o'clock uh, Monday, and I know you'll be there. I hope you got the study questions, we're re ready to go. Um, it's been a grand, grand time, and the wishes are many. Uh, I really wish that I could hit a decent seven iron. <laughs> I really wish I could hit, hit a decent five iron. I wish I could hit the ball off the frigging tee and make it go down the fairway. But that's the little skill that, that I haven't, haven't acquired, but I will get it some, someday. 
Uh, I really want to take piano lessons again. Uh, Lynn and I have a travel schedule that knows no bounds where we're going to be. Um, we're not, not ready to say quite this moment, but one of those places will be Florence, I guarantee you, because Linda thinks that Florence is the greatest town in the created universe. So that's on our list. Uh, I really would like to be a classical DJ. That would be a great kick for me, uh, and so on. Anyway, uh, the wishes are many and the opportunities are there, and the great run has only gotten started. At the bottom of the program of our wedding, and Lynn and I were married uh, 11 years ago on the 13th of May in the great room just uh, which you walked by, we had written uh, the line which I once gave her from uh, Andrew Marvel's poem to his coy mistress, and, and part of it is, Although we cannot make our son stand still, yet we will make him run. And we will make our son keep running. I know we'll do that. The running is not over, and it will keep on. The, ch the chances that we've had together have been absolutely remarkable. The love that we've had from all of you has known no bounds. And I can tell you that the, the traditions that we've been part of here, the learning that we've been part of here, the love and the friendships have made all the difference in the world. In a marvelous dialogue of Plato's called the Phaedrus, which is a long discussion on art and beauty and rhetoric. After that discussion by the side of the river Alyssus in Athens, Bill Beers, and Socrates comes to the end of that and he says, Phaedrus, is it time we brought this to a halt? And Phaedrus says, yes. And Socrates says, we should end with a prayer. And Socrates says, let's do that. And Phaedrus says, let's do that. Socrates says, here it is, quote, beloved Pan and all you gods who dwell in this place, may the inner and the outer man be as one. May I count the wise man and he alone as truly rich, and may I have such a measure of gold as he alone can truly bear and carry. And Phaedra says to Socrates, is that enough? No, Socrates, there's one more thing. He said, friends should have all things in common. And that's an important part of what we all have in common together. I would share with you just one, one final thing. This group, I know, has heard of the uh, uh, seven virtues from the ancient world. They're Justice, courage, wisdom, and temperance. The Christians added on faith, hope, and love. Uh, to that were seven vices. The, the chaplains in the back row can tell you about the vices in great detail. Uh, many of my colleagues practice them regularly. <laughs> but um, all of that, uh, those seven good things, there's another list of the seven worst sins, and they come from Mahatma Gandhi. Listen to this. The seven worst sins. Wealth without work. Ponder that. Pleasure without conscience. Knowledge without character. Commerce without morality. How much you want to talk about that? Science without humanity. Worship without sacrifice. If you really believe in something, it ought to count. It ought to make a difference. It ought to be earned. Pol uh, worship without sacrifice and politics without principle. We could talk about that for the rest of the day. But uh, Haskell Monroe from whom I got this list, added an eighth worst sin. And he's absolutely right. The eighth worst sin is talent without achievement. We're in the talent development racket, ladies and gentlemen. We try to get that developing as far as we possibly can. When I give my uh, 175th summer welcome address, I often end <laughs> with this. I say to the students and their parents, there, you're here for three and only three things. Number one, you're here to find out what your needs and interests and skills and talents are. Number two, you're here to develop those, those talents and interests as far as you can. And thirdly, having done those two things, and it takes a long time to do it, you're here to figure out how to use all that for the benefit of the rest of us. Because knowledge is what we have together. As Socrates said, we have all these things in common. It's what makes human life so interesting. We were born for being together and sharing these things and being part of this great conversation that's gone on through all these generations for both of us has been a truly incredible experience. I think I should end with my all-time favorite teaching evaluation. Dear Dr. B., 
written on the back of one of those fill-in-the-blank uh, sheets. Dear Dr. B, I really enjoyed taking your introductory philosophy class. As a result of taking your class, I've gotten very interested in philosophy. As a result of that, I talk about philosophy a great deal, especially when I go out on dates. As a result of that, I don't go out much anymore. <laughs> and that certainly saves money. <laughs> so I guess I've helped economic development in some very strange way. Thank you all. Oh, bless you. I think it's president. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, bless your hearts. Are there any questions? Thank you for coming. Have a great day. It's a lovely time to be out.